Hi everybody, so looking ahead to this week in markets, the biggest event by far is the G20 meeting. That's because President Trump of the US is expected to meet President Xi of China. And the hope is that that uh, personal relationship, that personal meeting can resolve the trade differences. And so trade, uh, trade deal on the way would obviously be a net positive for markets. Not that they really need it. Uh, the context of this meeting is that we're seeing record highs in the S&P 500 in the US. So US stock markets are the highest they've ever been. Uh, government bond yields all plummeting to multi-year lows. Uh, the Japanese JGB 10-year bond, that has just hit record, uh, record lows. So uh, that means that investors really buying anything that uh, can't be pinned down. That's government bonds, that's, uh, that's US stocks, and it's also gold. Gold hit a five-year high. And so it tells us the importance of these central banks. And so we'll be looking ahead to some of the big data this week, uh, which includes UK and US GDP, as well as Eurozone inflation data. So more specifically on that economic data, let's have a look at the calendar here. Uh, you can see that at the start of the week, we've got this IFO uh, survey from Germany. Um, so again, harking back to the ECB, what we can take away probably from last week's discussions is that uh, really basically if this IFO data stays as is, that sets the, sets the cards out for an ECB rate cut sometime this year. Uh, we've got the, the BOJ, and as I mentioned, uh, government bond yields in Japan already plummeting new lows. As I mentioned in a video on YouTube uh, last week, um, this is not a flight to safety. Uh, this is investors front running the Bank of Japan and any more quantity that, quantitative easing that they're about to do, i.e. the central bank buying bonds. Investors are buying bonds before the central bank does so that the price goes up. Um, we've got the RBNZ, uh, and this is somewhat of a forward-looking indicator given that the RBNZ was one of the first two cut rates, and these other major central banks are now signaling they will, but haven't actually done so yet, but so we'll look to see what that, uh, the RBNZ decides and says this time around. And we've got that US and UK GDP, which I'll we'll talk about a little bit more in a minute, and, and uh, again, the Eurozone CPI with the idea of that possible ECB rate cut coming around the corner. So as I mentioned in the opening gambit, the G20 is really all about what it infers for the, uh, the trade war. Normally these G20 meetings are just elites meeting up and making grand promises, but nothing really happening. This time around, there are real world consequences. Um, what we hope can happen here is that President Trump puts the case for the US to President Xi in personal terms that Xi can then take away back to the Communist Party in China and, and slightly reorientate their approach to the, the trade negotiations. If I were in Trump's shoes, uh, I think what I would be saying here is that this is not an attack on China um, or China's values even. It's purely re -le uh, leveling the playing field in terms of trade and technology, which has been slightly off kilter for the last few years. And this is an attempt by the US to rebalance. If Xi believes that, then we are setting, uh, that, that, that would be a big step towards um, a resolution of the, the trade conflict and some sort of trade deal between the US and China. Uh, that should be good news for economic growth. Um, the interesting thing here, and a bit of a head spinner, is if we do get this trade resolution now, um, maybe that jeopardizes this dovish talk that we've had from central banks over the last uh, month or so, particularly last week. Um, the economic data in the US, at least, has not really fallen off a cliff by any stretch. It looks very solid, specifically unemployment data. Inflation only just a tad below their 2% um, target. So if suddenly we don't have the trade war around the corner, dragging economic growth lower for the next few years, uh, then there's less reason to cut rates. And actually markets may find that to be a negative bit of news. So that's, that's an alternative viewpoint on the, on the trade war in this upcoming G20 that's worth looking out for. Maybe not in the knee-jerk reaction in markets, but in the days and weeks to, to follow. Now, as far as UK GDP, the expectation is a drop to 
quarter over quarter versus 0.5 last time around. So obviously a deceleration in economic growth. Um, we're looking at this in the context of Brexit, obviously. Um, if there is an extension to the October deadline, which with Boris Johnson as prime minister, which obviously he's not yet, but it looks like he will be, seems likely because Johnson has, uh, has talked about October as being a hard deadline, but you, says, you sort of suspect that it's not uh, because there is no obvious solution to keeping it as a hard deadline. So if the deadline gets pushed back, that gives the Bank of England more time to raise interest rates. Uh, so if you get some better than expected data here, that, that's positive for the pound. And especially in the context of the dollar falling, which it has done in the wake of that Fed meeting, uh, then you get another little extra boost for the, uh, for the pound there. Um, the other way of looking at things here is that um, if UK growth does exceed too much to the upside, so if we maybe if we're able to maintain something close to that 0.5% quarter over quarter growth that we had uh, in the previous quarter, then actually that might embolden Boris Johnson and other Brexiteers who are prominent in the Conservative Party to push for a no deal Brexit because the economy's uh, on strong footing. So that's a potential downside risk to, to Sterling, which may, may cap the upside somewhat um, if we do get some sort of rebound and positive data. Obviously, vice versa holds. If it's weak data, you would say that probably, again, takes the steam out of any rise in the pound against the dollar and probably puts further pressure on the pound against currencies like the yen. US GDP data also interesting from a political context. Um, if we do get some soft numbers uh, out of the US, then undoubtedly, if not immediately, at some point following, you're going to get some sort of criticism of the Fed by Donald Trump. Uh, Trump has obviously honed in on the Fed as an excuse for why the economy isn't performing better. Uh, from his perspective, he's done all the right things, done the tax cuts, you know, reduced regulation, uh, but the Fed has been raising interest rates and, and, and uh, took some of the steam out of the, the rise in the US economy. So if we see that proved in the data, you can expect Trump to respond. And the reason I mention that is that it seems to have worked last time. Uh, the Fed directly, uh, Trump directly criticizing the Fed, um, saying there should be more rate cuts in QE. Uh, lo and behold, a few months later, uh, whether you believe it's directly related or not, that is what we're in fact looking at, uh, a rate cut from the Fed and maybe quantitative easing to follow if, the, um, if inflation remains soft and we have a trade problem. So um, certainly worth watching the, the reaction, the political reaction to these GDP numbers. And of course, if they are soft, uh, then all the more reason, uh, all the more excuse for the Fed to cut rates. If they're strong, you could probably argue that we're in a good news is bad news scenario, given the big lift we've had in markets this week. Um, we don't want any kind of downside risk to that chance of a, of a rate cut from the, from the Fed this year. Right, that, that's it for this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. And if you do want to see these as soon as they're released, then follow myself and LCG on YouTube and social media.